I've been photographing the Queen for just under 20 years now as Getty Images Royal Photographer. The Queen was an absolutely incredible person to photograph. I mean, people talk about her aura and that is no understatement. She walks into a room, for her it was just another day at work, but for the people she's meeting, she met, it could have been one of the most exciting days of her life. And I think she understood that, you know, she always wore bright colours. She knew that everyone wanted to see her and she was the focus of everyone's attention. I think she respected that and I think that was a really important part of her character. But to, to photograph her was a huge privilege. Um, she was definitely in her latter years. Uh, it was less of a regular occurrence, but that meant it was all the more special. So she was an incredible person to photograph. I've photographed her a few times in the last few months. I think one of the most special times was the Platinum Jubilee. Of course, we all remember her on the balcony appearing for that final Platinum Jubilee appearance where no one was quite sure if she'd actually be able to make it. And so it was a pretty emotional moment when she came out wearing green. She looked out across the sea of people. And I think she must have been quite emotional at that moment. And it was you know, a really incredible few days of Platinum Jubilee, uh, very special. I think that all eyes of the world are on London that week. My job as a raw photographer is to record these moments. So I've been up and down the country from Scotland to Wales, not only recording um, uh, events with the Queen and the Coffin traveling around the country, but also events with the new King, Prince Charles. I also work with him, photographing him. So we've been seeing him traveling all around the country. And I think it has been a really surreal moment. When I first, heard the news that the Queen had sadly passed away. I was in Windsor and I was on a bridge because I'd gone down to photograph Windsor Castle and an amazing rainbow appeared over the round tower. And it was probably one of the most unforgettable moments of my life, incredibly surreal as I watched the flag go down to half mast, this rainbow appeared and it was just an incredibly poignant moment and my phone buzzed with the news that the Queen had sadly passed away. It was a lovely touch to see Prince George and Princess Charlotte at the funeral, of course, you know, it's probably the first funeral they've been to. It must have been a weird experience for them, I think, in, but also historic and very important, bearing in mind their position within the family and how, how the historical context of that is so important. So I think, you know, it was very touching to see them there, uh, poignant to see the family and, and sad at the same time. I've been lucky to photograph the family all together and capture some of those, um, those lovely family moments. And one of my favourite pictures actually is of Prince George chatting to the Queen at Princess Charlotte's christening and he's pointing up looking at a hat who knows what they're saying but it's just a lovely moment and every opportunity you get to photograph the family together was was really special things like christenings births uh, weddings it was always um, a really rare but special opportunity photographing um, well now Prince of Wales Prince William with the Queen there's so many lovely moments I can think back of over the years lots of you know one in particular where the Queen's looking for her spectacles at the um, the Festival of Remembrance uh, in the Royal Albert Hall and they're laughing together. Of course, Trooping Colour, we always saw some lovely kind of interactive moments between the Queen and, and Prince William and Prince Harry. And they, I think they all had an incredibly warm relationship, certainly symbiotic. You know, the Queen taught all the members of the Royal Family so much about duty, about, you know, from her just lifetime of experience. And, and she loved having them there supporting her at the same time so it's very much a symbiotic relationship but also just incredibly warm and, and loving family relationships. It was lovely to see um, not only the Duke and Duchess of Sussex but also the now Prince and Princess of Wales come out and view flowers and tributes to the Queen outside Windsor Castle. That was very special to see everyone together. Um, it was amazing to see such a huge crowd of people. It was a beautiful sunny afternoon. They walked out together to view the tributes to the Queen. I think it's, you know, it's lovely to see everyone together. It's, you know, it's a very sad time for the family, but it's clear that, you know, it has sort of united everyone in some sense. I mean, the Queen definitely had a great sense of humour and I was lucky enough to photograph her, you know, not only official portraits, but, you know, images with the family. And for me, it was all those, those candid moments. She never played up to the camera she always you know and that's why you had to be on the ball to capture those those like flickers of emotion or interactions with people that she met and I've got so many pictures uh, that really remind me of that sense of humor one of my favorite actually was at the Royal Albert Hall where she got this cake the knife stuck in the cake she was meant to be cutting and Princess Anne had to help her and Sophie Wessex was there and everyone burst into laughter and it's just those kind of natural moments are the ones that I love to capture as a photographer and they're a little bit more kind of insightful than the more formal uh, formal pictures I make. And I've 
photographed the king a lot, huge amount all around the world, and you know he's fantastic to photograph. I think he's going to be a great king alongside Camilla, who's a huge support to him, the new queen consort. And I've just been so lucky to photograph that. I think taking before he's obviously learned a lot from his mother. He's going to take that sense of duty forward. When we're on royal royal trips abroad, he completes up to eight engagements a day. He doesn't have lunch. He's got a real energy for someone who an age where many people have retired. It's an incredible uh, attitude. So yeah, I think he would do huge. Matt. He clearly had an incredible relationship with his mother. You just have to look at images of them at the Highland Games and the interaction between them both. And I think that was very special. But I think um, seeing him over the last week has been incredibly difficult for him. I've got a few favourites of the Queen. One of the ones I took earlier this year was an official picture to commemorate her accession day, which is the day she became Queen, taken up in Sandringham, somewhere she obviously feels very comfortable. And she's working on her red box, her iconic red box, which she gets her notes in uh, every day of the year, apart from Christmas and Easter. And she's laughing. And I love that moment because for me, that sums up her character, that commitment to duty taken this year. So, you know, not that long ago. And she was committed to duty right to the end and she enjoyed it. I also took one um, at a place called the Lister Hospital up in Stevenage and it was on one of her day-to-day -day royal engagements and the great thing is about doing those, covering all that side of her life, is that you never quite know what's going to happen in front of you and that's the great thing about being a royal photographer, the, 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 the unexpected, the anticipation and the light dropped in a really nice way and she was chatting some nurses and it was a nice clean background, it was a kind of a cheeky expression and for that subtlety of expression, it's kind of a really endearing photograph, and that's one of my favourites. I was so lucky to photograph uh, Prince Philip and the Queen um, for their 73rd wedding anniversary and official picture in Windsor Castle, and you've got the round tower in the background, and Prince Philip's opening up a card from his great-grandchildren, Princess Charlotte, Prince Louis, and Prince George. And for me, it's like a candid photo again. It's just a lovely moment. You can see the prince kind of lights up when he opens the card. And I think for anyone to reach their 73rd wedding anniversary, it's an amazing achievement, um, royal, royal kind of side aside. But, you know, it, that was particularly poignant, and you could see their relationship. And I think... It was, again, symbiotic. They, were, they, they gave strength to each other throughout their life. Prince Philip was an amazing support for the Queen on all royal tours all around the world. And, and so, you know, to see them both together, interred together in Windsor, I think that, that's going to be very emotional. After Prince Philip passed, um, there was a couple of engagements and it must have been a very difficult time for the Queen. But I remember photographing the Queen at a pared down uh, troop in the colour ceremony in Windsor Castle. Mm -hmm. And she was tapping her foot to the music, she was smiling, and she, you know, incredibly positive. And actually, there was lots of engagements um, a few months after the Duke had passed where the Queen was on absolutely top form. Um, of course, you know, he knows what she's thinking inside, but she, she really um, took on engagements with a positivity after a period of mourning. And I think, of course, she was incredibly sad about the Duke's passing, but she, she embraced work, I think, and, and her duty. I was just next to the state entrance for the funeral, right in the midst of it, so the, the coffin came out of Windsor Castle right next to me. It was the most sombre, sad moment as the royal family processed along. Of course, it was COVID time, so there was only 30 members of family allowed there. And I will never forget actually seeing that photograph. The, the shot of the Queen sitting in the pew on her own was just such a powerful image. And, you know, it, it really was an illustration of the, the COVID times and the difficulties, difficulties that she had. So, you know, very powerful imagery there. The Queen was definitely a fashion icon. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget her appearances at Royal Ascot. Royal Ascot, the traditional British horse racing week that we have in the summer. And I mean, Ascot's going to be a very sad place without the Queen. She was Royal Ascot. Her passion for horse racing was well known. But uh, the day she won the, the Gold Cup at Ascot, I'll never forget. But, you know, people bet on the colour of her hats every day, you know, that people were fascinated by the Queen's fashion. She always wore bright colours so she could be spotted in a crowd. She knew how important it was so that people could see her. Uh, she once said, I have to be seen to be believed, and that was so true, and that influenced the way she dressed. And she always looked incredibly elegant. She had milliners who put her hats together, beautiful embroidery. And, you know, there was culturally sensitive dressing, diplomatic dressing when she was on a royal tour to Ireland, you know, in green, Canada, in red, Australia, in yellow. So she had that respect. You know, history was kind of essentially woven into the clothes that she wore. Often she would combine 
gifts of materials she'd received and, and they'd be incorporated into the clothes she wore. Mm. Uh, so, that, you know, there was a real history to how she dressed and, you know, cultural sensitivity and, you know, so many different factors. So it's absolutely fascinating. You could write a whole book on the Queen's fashion. The day she won the Gold Cup, so this was an incredible day. So her horse estimate powered over the finishing line and I'll never forget the atmosphere. It was incredible. She was the first monarch in over 207 years to win the biggest horse racing trophy. I mean, the Queen was given her first horse at the age of four, Peggy, uh, and from then on there was a life of passion for breeding horses, racing horses, and to see the look on her face when she was handed the Gold Cup, it just really went to show how much that meant to her, and you know, it, it was an incredible moment.